so today's topic is in the umbrella of classical problem of synchronization this is the dining philosophers problem so as the name suggests some philosophers are sitting on a table for dining so what may be the issue let's see here you can see we are having a round table with five chairs are placed in manner way so that five philosophers can sit there now you can see here in middle we are having a rice ball and we are having five dishes that in which philosophers can eat but the interesting thing is you can see we are having only five forks there one two three four and five only five forks are there and as you know how japanese eat noodles and they use two forks to eat right so if one philosopher wants to eat it uh, has to she or he has to use two forks okay so the thing is the philosophers in, in their life do only two things as per this problem says that they either think or they eat what only two tasks they have they either think as they are philosophers they either think or they can eat so whenever they are thinking they are not eating and whenever they are eating they are not thinking so only one task they can do at a time so what is the problem here as you can see when a philosopher wants to eat it has she has to use both of the chopsticks to eat the noodles right and suppose another philosopher who is sitting besides her wants to eat also at the same time but how can he, she eat because one chopstick is taken by this p0 philosopher so this another philosopher which is sitting besides her cannot eat right so this is the setup of this problem let's see what i have told you in what black and white so consider five philosophers who spend their lives thinking and eating means they have only two tasks to do they either think or eat now the philosophers share a circular table surrounded by five chairs each belonging to one philosopher as you can see we are having five chairs each belonging to one philosopher only and then in the center of the table is a ball of rice and the table is laid with five single chopsticks so here is the crux we are having only five single chopsticks now how it is a problem of uh, concurrency can anyone tell me can you get an idea what we are trying to do here what is the problem is all about if there are only five chopsticks then what will happen can you imagine the situation anyone uh, what is the main problem in concurrency whenever you are sharing the resources right what whenever you are sharing the resources then only there may be a problem because both the persons try to use the same resource which is there now you can see here as in normal scenario if suppose we are talking about independent process if there are five philosophers then there must be how many chopsticks for being an independent process can anyone tell me can anyone tell me if i want this a uh, independent process then how many chopsticks do i need so that no philosopher has to do anything with other philosopher very good krishna and shreyas exactly we need 10 chopsticks two for each philosopher then in that case what will happen both the all the philosophers are independent entity they don't have to interact with others anand is saying five how anand it is five i am asking for making this these philosophers independent means they don't have to share the resources then how many chopsticks do we need so the correct answer is 10 so it, that two okay five sets <laughs> uh, you are like i am born james born right anand <laughs> uh, you are taking a pause to tell that five sets in one set we are having two chopsticks each right and that will be the complete answer if you want to yes, set five sets okay so let's move on so the thing is uh, if we are talking about an independent process 
then we need a 10 chopsticks, two for each philosopher. But uh, we are then in that case, we are using more resources. But what is the characteristics of a concurrency? We are we are solving the problem with less resources, right? So uh, we are having only five chopsticks here. Now, this is a real life scenario. Can you imagine it in the reference of operating system, how it is related with operating system? Can anyone take this analogy to the working of operating system with the resources and the processes that wants to use the resources? Can anyone relate these things? Pretty simple one. And you just have to tell philosopher means what? Chopsticks means what? And you can relate. Can anyone relate it? This real life scenario into the operating system context. Why we are understanding this problem in this operating system subject. This has to do something with this subject, right? Why we are discussing this. Can anyone relate this? Come on, use your imagination. Think about it. Anyone, come on, do it first. Come on. Uh, Ananya is saying philosophers are users, processes will use CPU concurrently. Yes, uh, exactly, Krishna, but I just want to tell you that uh, you have to make the analogy with these uh, chopsticks and the chairs with the operating system context. As the Ananya is saying, philosophers are users. Be specific in your answer. Philosophers, in the sense, means processes, right? Philosophers are processes which wants to use the resources of CPU. And what are the chopsticks? Chopsticks are the resources, right? With the help of these resources, they can uh, do some activity, right? So philosophers are what? Processes. Chopsticks are your resources, as you can think of, about CPU resources, right? So are we good with this problem, the setup of this problem? Process will use uh, CPU concurrently, yeah, exactly. So are we good with this setup of problem? Yes or no? Problem is clear? Okay, so let's discuss some more concept in this dining philosopher problem. So when a philosopher thinks, uh, as you know, there is a problem, there must be some constraints, some rules. So we are discussing rules now, how they can eat philosophers. So when a philosopher thinks she does not interact to, with her colleagues, because as I told you, they can do only two things, and one thing at a time, like if she is thinking, she is not eating and not interacting with others. If she is eating, she is again not interacting with others or either not thinking. So from time to time, a philosopher gets hungry and tries to pick up the two chopsticks that are closest to her. So uh, to, in order to eat something, she needs two chopsticks. <clears throat> and this is a common sense that uh, you try to acquire the chopsticks which are nearest to you, right? And uh, which chopsticks are nearest to you, to you and your left and right neighbors, right? So the chopsticks that are between her and her left and right neighbors means you will take pick your left chopstick and your right chopstick and you will start eating the noodles or the rice. So a philosopher may pick up only one chopstick at a time. So as you know, we, uh, concurrency means we are doing something in sequential manner, right? So in philosophers may pick up only one chopstick at a time. Firstly, you will suppose you are picking left chopstick one at a time and then right chopstick if it is there, if it is not acquired by another philosopher, which is sitting beside you, right? So a philosopher may pick up only one chopstick at a time. Obviously, she cannot pick up a chopstick that is already in the hand of a neighbor. So we are philosophers in the city chairs. They are very dignified. They cannot snatch the chopsticks from the hand of another philosopher, right? Understand? So they cannot pick the chopstick from the hand of another philosopher. So when a hungry philosopher has both her chopsticks at the same time, then in that case only she eats without releasing the chopsticks. Once you are eating, you, you will not release your chopsticks because with the help of chopsticks only you can eat. So when she is finished eating, she puts down both chopsticks and start thinking again. So once you are done with your critical process thing, uh, you relax and think about something else. So this is the setup of this problem. So let's see what is the solution. Uh, one solution is to present each chopstick with a semaphore. A semaphore is what? It is an integer variable value. If you are to, it is of two type, binary semaphore and 
counting semaphore. Binary semaphore can hold only two values, zero and one. With the help of semaphore, we can solve the problem of concurrency. We have seen this, how we have solved the problem of bounded buffer in the previous lecture. So let's see, this is the, another application of semaphore we are having. So a loss first tries to grab a chopstick by executing a weight operation on that semaphore. Whenever this weight operation is uh, blinking in front of you, just you just have to tell uh, your mind that weight function is what? To increment or decrement? What weight function do? To increment or decrement the semaphore? Who will tell? Decrement. Weight is meant for decrement. Very good, Shreyas Mishra. Weight is for decrement, but uh, it also check one condition. If it is not less than equal to zero, then only it will decrement. Otherwise, you will be blocked. Understand? Very good, Shreya Sananya. Weight is to decrement, and another one, signal. Signal is to what? Signal is to what? Signal is to what? Weight weight is to decrement, and signal is to what? Come on, increment. Very good. Increment. Very good. Signal is to increment, and there is no clause in the signal. They simply increment. Uh, it do not check any condition in this. They simply increment. Very good, Vaibha, Parna, Darsh. It is to increment. So very simple concept. Weight is to decrement the semaphore if it is not less than equal to zero, because we cannot have a negative value in the semaphore. It is a positive integer value, and in the signal. We simply increment because when you are incrementing, you cannot be go into a negative integer value. So in signal, we don't have to check anything. We simply increment. So she released her chopstick by executing the signal operation on the appropriate semaphore. So once he, uh, one philosopher is done eating, it will give a signal to the other philosopher that she is done with eating. And now you can pick the chopstick, which is lie nearest to you. So let's discuss the structure of loss for i. We are having this code. Uh, we will discuss this code with the help of our paint as we always do. Uh, you have seen a lot of things is written like SEMA 4, chopstick 5, right? Let's discuss what it is. Here is my whiteboard. <laughs> now I will explain you on this whiteboard. Okay, let's see. Uh, how this code works. Firstly, see, SEMA4, you aware? What is SEMA4 now? What, chopstick 5. We are having an array of chopstick. We are having an array of chopstick with how many values? 5. And this is <clears throat> kind of a circular queue. As you can see here, we are having 5 shares, right? <clears throat> In left hand side, we, suppose we have started this circular queue. Uh, I guess I have given the homework of circular queue, right? So everyone is aware how circular queue works. Yes or no? Uh, you are aware how insertion and deletion works in circular queue? Tell me, yes or no? Yes, cool. So here it is a circular queue. Here it is a circular queue. Now these five chairs are placed very properly manner. And then we are having this chopstick zero left hand side and chopstick one in the right hand side and then chopstick two, chopstick three, and chopstick four, right? So this is the setup. Now we are having this circular queue with the five elements. So we are good to go. Uh, this one is clear, right? First line is clear. First line is clear. Okay, so let's go on to execute this line. What this line will do? Wait chopstick I. And, and one more thing, initially all the all these chopsticks are initialized with one. So let me firstly initialize them with one. Means all chopsticks are free. This is the initial case that all chopsticks are free. So initial value of the chopstick is one, right? So this is the initial thing. Uh, so all chopsticks are initialized with one. Now let's execute this first statement. Wait on what chopstick i and i we let's start i with zero let's start i is zero i is equal to zero to what zero to four or five zero to four right so i is we are taking zero to four so let's start with 
zero. So run it for i equal to zero. Tell me what this first function line will do. Tell me what this first line will do. Where chopstick i? Yes, Shreyas. Uh, block. Uh, yes, it will block. How it will? What it is going to block? It is going to block what? That chopstick zero, right? Can anyone assist me? I need one person. Anyone can help me, please. Anyone volunteer to help me out in solving this problem? I need one person to talk. Anyone? Anyone wants to assist me? Chopstick zero will be blocked. Very good, Krishna. Exactly, chopstick zero will be blocked by that philosopher. Any? I need one person for assistance. Can anyone help? Come on, anyone. I just need your help. You don't have to solve. I will explain each and everything. I just need one person to interact with, so that I can understand you are uh, listening what I am telling you, and all, we are on the same page. Come on, anyone. Just help me out. Shreyas, can you help me? Shreyas, please unmute yes, yourself. Sir. Yes, you there? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Shreyas. Yes, sir. Thank you, Shreyas. So, what this first line will do? Where chopstick i i value is zero. So, what we we are doing to do? We are trying to acquire the lock means we are trying to block that chopstick i. Yes, yes, Shreyas. Yes, yes, sir. So yes, let's sir. let's make it block. So, what is the chopstick i? Uh, chopstick zero value is what one. So, when yeah. you are processing this weight function, then what will be the updated value? It will be zero. Very good. Make it zero. Make it zero very quickly. Let's make it zero. So far, so good. <clears throat> so far, so good, right? Yes, Done. Yes, so let's move on. Do this second execution of a statement. What this statement will do? Tell me. So uh, it will actually check its neighbor. Uh, it Na neighbor exactly. So tell me the sequence. Like i value is zero, then zero plus one is what? Then what will happen in the proper manner? Uh, it will it will check the remainder and it will be one. So exactly. it will check its neighbor. So neighbor so and in, then in that case we are here, right? Chopstick one, right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. what this weight function will do with this? Yeah, it, it will, will update its value, itself. right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. So, what will be the updated uh, value? It zero. And Very good. It zero. Exactly. It will be zero. Make it zero. So now, what will happen if the previous value is one? Then, in that case, only that philosopher, this philosopher, we are talking about, that this philosopher can acquire the lock on both the chopsticks right now, right? If you are having both the chopsticks in your hand, then what we are going to do next, Shreyas? We are gonna eat. It. Very so good, exactly. We can... So we can eat if you are having two chopsticks in our both hands, right? So right now, yes, uh, that person is eating. Suppose at the same time, suppose at the same time, what happened? This one, this philosopher, this second one, try to eat. Then what will happen? Let's see. Let's see what will happen suppose uh, this will come it will firstly acquire for chopstick one is its left side right so suppose i value is one then chopstick zero chopstick one value is what zero right zero so yes, can sir. this philosopher acquire the log no sir right because yes. value is zero, it cannot acquire the lock until and unless the value is one. So the neighbor has to wait until and unless signal is given by this philosopher. And how this signal will be given once that philosopher is done with eating, right? Hmm. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. So suppose this process, this philosopher has done eating. So it will give the signal to chopstick i, and what is the value of i in this respect? I is zero. zero. Let me let me make it clear. Here i is equal to zero. So what is the value of value of chopstick zero after this signal function? It will become one. One. Very good. Exactly. Delete it. Make it one. 
make it one. So this is the updated value. Okay. So similarly, when you execute this next statement, then what will happen? Then uh, its neighbor, uh, uh, the chopstick one, will also become one. Exactly. Now she has re released the resources. That is, she is done with eating. She released the chopsticks. Now we are again good to go. And that this i equal to one, which is waiting. This i equal to one. This philosopher, that is i equal to one, is waiting for what? It was blocked, na? It was yes, blocked, na? Previously. Now it can yes, acquire the log. Now it can acquire, acquire the, the log. log. So this is in this manner. These philosophers can eat and think. Understand? So everyone is good with this yes. solution. Pretty simple one. Only four lines of code. Thank you, Shreyas. Thank you for helping me. Thank you. You can mute yourself now. Everyone, is there any issue? Let me know so that we can move on. Yes or no? Let me know. Very pretty, easy solution we are having. Wait means to decrement the chopstick value and then acquire the log. Eat if you are having both the chopsticks in your hand. And once you are done eating, um, give the signal by making it one so that other philosophers can eat if they want to eat. So let me know yes or no. Are we good with this solution? Everyone, are we good with this? Come on, let me know. Give me the signal so that I can move on. Okay, cool. So we are very good with this solution. So let's move on. Uh, so uh, this is the solution uh, we, we are having and we have find out the reasoning behind this solution and the crux. Now let's discuss about its drawbacks, its limitation. So next we are going to discuss its uh, limitations. So we are done with this. Let's See what I have explained. Each philosopher yeah. picks up first the fork on the left and then the fork on the right. And suppose what happening is in the code. Firstly, we are picking the left fork and then the right fork. Suppose I ask you, uh, if I suppose if I want to pick the right fork first and the left fork, then what should I change in this code? Can anyone suggest? As you know, this code is doing what? Firstly, left chopstick is picking and then right chopstick. Now my question is, if I want to pick the right chopstick first, then left chopstick, then what should I change in my code? Can anyone suggest? Can anyone suggest? Come on. Come on, anyone suggest? Yes. Swap the weird statement, exactly. Shreyas Mishra, exactly. Uh, what we are going to do, we can swap this one, this statement. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Anand, let me mute you. Okay, so we can swap these statements. Then in that case, what will happen? We can pick the first right fork, then left fork. Very good, Ananya. Interchange in the weight statement. So after the philosopher is finished eating, the two forks are replaced on the table, right? We are done with eating. So you can replace. And while you are replacing, you are giving the signal to other philosophers that forks are placed on the table. You can eat if you want. OK, so let's discuss. Another thing, and these are the drawbacks and limitation of the solution. This solution can lead to the deadlock. What is a deadlock situation? We have discussed earlier, I guess. Deadlock is something that uh, processes are not able to progress. How in this manner, if all of the philosophers are hungry at the same time, they all sit down. They all pick up the fox on the left as the code tell you that firstly you have to pick the left. So everyone can pick the left fork. There are five philosophers and five chopsticks. So everyone can pick the left fork, right? But then what will happen when they try to pick the right fork? Then what will happen? There is no fork, right? <laughs> then there is no fork. And they are so dignified philosophers. They, they do not request the other philosophers to please give me the fork or they not either snatch the fork to eat, right? And everyone is uh, looking at each other that who will release the fork so that the, uh, philosophers can have two chopsticks, right? So they are very dignified philosophers, understand? So if all the philosophers are hungry at the same time, they all sit down, they all pick up the fox on the left and they all reach out for the other fork, which is not there. So this is very 
award and dignified position and all philosophers starve they all waiting that if someone releases us chopstick and everyone is looking like uh, i have my left chopstick i am just waiting for my right chopstick whenever i will get my right chopstick i will eat right so this is the deadlock situation means uh, uh, you are holding one resource and looking for another resource which is holded by another resource right so this is the deadlock situation we are having and uh, can uh, this uh, let's have an analogy with this suppose your mother is uh, having a remote in her hand and you are having what switch of your tv right you are having uh, the switch of your tv and mother is saying release the switch of tv and you are saying please release the remote so they are in deadlock situation do you get this point uh, mother is not able to wash the tv and uh, you are also not able to wash the tv you are asking mother to give me the remote and mother is saying uh, release the power button of your tv so this is the deadlock situation and in this manner neither mother is able to wash the tv neither you able to wash the tv right <laughs> so this is very undignified position all philosophers will die starve okay so uh what is the homework for you possible remedies to deadlock problem as we have seen there is a deadlock problem so there must be some solution right these remedies are written in your galvin book you just go and read it out so that you can have some idea how we can solve this deadlock problem right so this is your homework possible remedies to the deadlock problem uh okay so we are done with this let's discuss another topic this is the last topic we are having in this concurrency and last topic is your monitors so let's discuss last topic and then day after tomorrow we will be having a class test uh, that is covering to your second unit till now whatever topics we have discussed so uh, as the name suggests monitor <clears throat> what first picture comes in your mind can anyone tell me who is a monitor who is a monitor of your class do you have any monitor in your class <clears throat> anyone in school i think you have monitors right prakash shukla who is the monitor in your 12th standard do you remember his her name or you are the monitor prakar are you there prakar shukla are you there prakar yes sir yes who is the monitor who is the monitor sir, in your no class one. in sir, yeah? no one no one no one okay no one sir no one so and in 12th standard do you remember his yes, name sir in that to there was no one uh, your voice is very slow low you can write in the chat box uh prince sharma are you there prince prince yes sir yes uh, do you remember the name of monitor of your 12th standard <laughs> yes sir nihara ba niharika bajpai okay that's cool so what is the job of a monitor can you tell me uh, to cooperate uh, uh, to cooperate the class to silence uh, to cooperate the class to class monitor class. simply that uh, who is doing what and is doing in a proper manner suppose your teacher is saying everyone has to speak in english in the classroom only so the job of the monitor is to check the students if they they are speaking hindi or they are regional language or they are speaking in english right this is what monitor do right yes okay ananya is saying head of the class there was no monitor prakash shukla okay no issue i will explain what a monitor do so what monitors do monitor means to just make uh, them to follow the rule like monitor is there to check the processes if they are doing the right thing or not so we are simply monitor monitoring those processes just like in your house your mother your father is monitoring you that uh, i i are you um, uh, watching the tv or you are reading or you are you playing the pubg in your mobile phone or you are taking the class right so they are monitoring you time to time that you are heading into the right direction so in the same manner we are having monitors in this concurrency 
concept let's see how these monitors are going to monitor the processes if they are doing the right thing or not and make them to do the proper uh, sequencing of the statements so that there will be no deadlock situation so let's see how we can use monitors so what it is a monitor issue with what is the issue with semaphore if there is a problem then only we a look around for some solution so let's discuss firstly the issues with semaphore if all processes are share a semaphore with variable mutex mutex is what mutual exclusion which is initialized to one each process must execute firstly wait that is firstly you have to acquire the log for the to go into the critical section and then signal afterwards suppose if the sequence is not observed two processes may be in their critical section simultaneously suppose the programmer who is writing the code for this uh, process do some mistakes and does not observe this sequence then what will happen then two process may be entered into the critical section simultaneously so what is the solution solution to this issue is monitor fundamental high level synchronization construct what is a monitor it is a fundamental high level synchronization construct i will show you the structure how monitor works a monitor type is an adt what is the full form of adt come on write in the chat box what is the full form of adt come on do it fast adt is what you have seen this word in the data structure you have seen this word uh, in the data structure in the first unit itself what is the full form of adt come on tell me come on do you remember this is the first unit thing of your data structures come on tell me abstract data type very good ananya this is what abstract data type good a monitor type is an abstract data type that includes a set of programmer defined operations that are provided with mutual exclusion within the monitor means very good prakar ananya adarsh uh, good this is abstract data type so the monitor construct ensure that only one process at a time is active within the monitor means suppose you are having a class of 60 students and there is only one monitor right so what is the job of the monitor to ensure all the students of his or her class follow the rules right so the monitor construct ensure that only one processor at a time active within the monitor suppose teacher has asked to stand up and speak about some topic to one student so the job of the monitor that only that student is going to speak and not other students are murmuring so this is the structure of a monitor here you can see monitor as the top of the hair and in this monitor all these students are there now this monitor will take a check if they are following the same sequence of wait and signal function or not if there is any issue then monitor will assist them that you are doing the wrong thing so this is a solution so that we can check out the problem of that semaphore so we are done with this are you good with this monitor this is a simple concept of monitor we don't have to go into the details we 